Hello there everyone and welcome back to another video. Stop motion is an amazing animation technique that's been beloved by not only animators but the general public. And that's not just because it's hard and takes a long time to make, but it's also because of the realistic feeling of it. Objects used from real life like paper puppets and clay sculptures and such, all of these give the feeling that you're watching a real life footage of some small creatures that live in the same world, which in a way is true. But did you ever think about the way they're created? Or you tried making them yourself and got stuck at a certain point in the process? Well, that's what today's video is for. If you've read in the title, a full tutorial where we're gonna show you the steps to create stop motion animation in Adobe After Effects. Let's hop into it. Step 1. Importing and organizing the assets. First of all, you have to prepare your footage. After using whatever equipment you had access to shoot your still images, be it your phone or a professional camera setup. In case you shot a video, you're gonna have to extract every frame as an image from the whole footage. It can be as simple as taking screenshots or using any editing software to cut then export as images and frames. After you're done doing that, copy the folder with all the images to your computer wherever it is that you organize your After Effects assets. We're going to assume that you shot your animation in its proper progression order. However, some people using certain puppets or sculptures might find specific motions easier shot backwards or in a specific order that makes sense to that particular workflow. In which case, you will simply reverse the order of the images and that's about it. Now is the part where you open After Effects, create a new project, now to import your images, go to File, Import, File. Then find your images wherever they are and select them from the first one to the last one. Make sure the JPEG sequence box is unchecked and Import As is set to Footage. And here you go! The still images of your stop motion animation are imported and are waiting for the next step. Step 2. Setting the frame rate to get the choppiness. Alright, now what? Well now we have these set images to sit properly on your timeline in the exact frame rate that we want. Meaning that each image has to take a time on the timeline where all of them put together would create a speed of 12 images per second. To do that, select all your images and drag them into the icon that says create a new composition when you hover on it. Then on the box that appears, we're going to choose the duration of every still image. Now the usual frame rate of an After Effects project is 24 FPS, but we want to have 12, therefore we're going to set the still duration to 2. This means that each still image is going to appear for 2 frames. If every image is appeared for 2 frames in a frame rate of 24 FPS, that means it's in fact a 12 FPS frame rate. Make sure to check the sequence layer box so that the images are after rather than on top of each other. And here, you can now play the video and see how your animation looks like, which brings us to the next step. Cleaning and refining the timing, manipulating frames. Now that we have everything clear on our timeline, and every image is visible with its duration, this is the part where we're going to be playing our animation, a considerable amount of time. Why? Well, because we're going to be observing and looking for any timing mistakes made, whether the motion is smooth or not, whether the physics seems natural or not, or simplify if there's a certain scene that's taken more or less time than it actually should. The good part about this step is that everything is manual. You don't like a frame? Remove it! This scene is too fast. Stretch the images on it. Too slow? Remove some images to express better feelings of speed. This is where the animation principles come in handy. Yes, it's not just when you film, but it's also when you manipulate all the frames to make the scene as smooth and or as realistic as possible. This step should be taken patiently, as you need to take your time doing all the refining because any rushing might result in a silly mistake that you can only notice after it's too late to adjust or modify anything at all. Adding more effects to give the sense of craft. Alright, this is the step where we get to spice the animation up a bit, even though it really depends on the style of animation you're going for. For example, paper puppet animation tend to have a drop shadow effect that give that layering sensation. It makes you feel as if the layers of paper are on top of each other, which in most cases is true. But let's talk more dynamic. 
Your animation needs that splash effect or that fire that comes out of a motor, or maybe even a motion blur to emphasize speed. To add effects, you're most likely going to use the Effects and Presets panel, which is on the right of your After Effects interface. Search for this effect you're wanting to apply, then drag and drop it on top of the layer you're using on, since you're likely to use effects on several images rather than one single frame. It will be much more practical if you use an adjustment layer. What is that, you ask? Well, it's simply a new layer that's on top of all of your other layers and any effect you drop on it will appear on all of them. And then you can use the timeline to control where the effect applies throughout your animation. This step is so broad and a lot can be done here. Therefore, we recommend you use references and look for more tutorials for the specific effects you want to apply there. Sound effects and editing. We're almost done here. A lot of people would consider this the most fun part in the whole process, and we don't blame them for that. Sound effects and editing is the part where you add the most life into the animation. Yes, even though it's already alive. But things like transitions in between scenes, camera movement, and audio are what will make the piece really finished and well done. To use a sound effect, get your mp3 file and drag and drop it into the elements of your composition, then add it to the timeline, the same way you did with images earlier. To make camera movement, the simplest way you can do that is to put all of your layers into a group, which you can do by selecting all of them, right clicking then clicking pre-compose, and you can then use keyframes on the group's position or scale to make any sort of movement you want. This is one way out of so many to make camera movements, so we encourage you to discover as much as you feel like because the resources for that are countless out there on the internet. The same goes for the transitions. The amount you can create from scratch in After Effects is ridiculous. Needless to mention that you can find presets and pre-made ones too. Rendering Finally, we're here. The easiest and the most relieving part. After you've set everything up and you're done with the editing, you're satisfied with what you see and you want to render your video, go to File, Export, then Add to Render Queue. A rendering panel will appear when you manage all of your renders and specify the location where you want your video to be exported. Then click render on the top right corner of the panel. And here you go, a finished piece of stop motion animation ready to be shared with the world. A lot of the concepts and methods mentioned in this video are highly dependent on what you want to do and how you want to do it, which style you want more and the specific effects you might want to create for the sake of the whole animation which is another reason we recommend that you learn more about the particular style you want to make and the best and most optimized tools to create it. We hope this tutorial was helpful for your stop motion journey and we hope to see you in our next videos. See ya!